Welcome listeners, you are tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. Unlocking Your Truth is a talk show about metaphysics and spirituality. And every week we have a different discussion topic. Sometimes it's me and sometimes I have a special guest on the show. And tonight we have a special guest and his name is Aditya J. Kumar Aya. And he's a great friend of mine. I've known him for a few years now and uh, it's a delight to have him on the show. And the topic for today's show is going to be how to reduce stress, calm your mind and relax your nervous system by changing the way you breathe. Now I'm going to read some information about AJ in a moment, but I should also just mention that we are broadcasting on 101.7 FM across the Fraser Valley from the unceded territory of the Stolo Nation. <laughs> so here's a bit more about AJ before we get into the nitty gritty of talking to him and picking his brain for how to reduce stress, calm your mind and relax your nervous system. So AJ is the host and founder of a podcast called My Seven Chakras, which is a fantastic podcast. And if you haven't checked it out, I suggest that you do. And he, I don't know how many episodes he's got now, but he's been doing it for a very long time. And he's had many, many guests on his show. And to date, he's received over 4 million downloads from 150 countries. And AJ is, he studied for an MBA at UBC, the University of British Columbia. But he decided not to take the traditional route. He realized that he had a passion inside of him for spirituality. And so instead of going uh, into a business career, he embarked on an entrepreneurial journey based on kindness, ancient wisdom, healing, and spirituality. And over the years, he's accumulated skills and experiences in energy healing, meditation, breath work, and other practices that have transformed his life and the lives of people he's come into contact with. And so it's always so great to share with others what has been beneficial to us on our journey. And AJ is a certified Soma breathwork instructor, and that's what we're going to spend most of today's show talking about. He loves using ancient yogic breathing practices with rhythmical euphoric music and scientific research to help people calm their mind, heal their chakras, relax their nervous system, experience deep states of bliss, and ultimately discover their life's purpose. And all of that sounds fantastic. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the show, AJ. Thanks, Leslie. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. And I even might have a personal question that yeah. I want to pick your brain about, but I'll save that for later. Okay, so absolutely. And firstly, thanks a lot for this wonderful introduction. It's always good to see you. And uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to be on your show. Well, it's an honor to have you and um, a delight to have you share with uh, our audience some of your wonderful spiritual wisdom. So let's find out a little bit more about AJ and his background, because you do have a bit like me, an interesting background, you know you've got an MBA and then you decided to go on this spiritual track with your life. So where did that all begin? Well, I think that's a great question. Uh, in my opinion, and as you would agree, there were many seeds that sort of initiated my spiritual awakening. And one of the seeds I definitely say was the accident that I had sometime in 2008 when I was on the bike uh, motorbike and on that particular day I was not wearing a helmet and I ended up crashing with a van lost consciousness and I ended up in a hospital multiple stitches and uh, some blood loss as well wow. and uh, obviously that was a traumatic experience because you know you're in the hospital you wake up and you have bandages all over your face it sort of makes you question your identity and allow, makes you go past the person that you're looking in the mirror right so I was having all these experiences and I realized that although I would heal, 
I knew deep down there were certain traumas and emotional stuff that I needed to resolve. And I did not have the tools to, to do that. And so I went on a journey and I discovered meditation, but meditation did not come naturally to me. And then I went on YouTube and I came across a chakra visualization. And so I lay on bed. I just did this visualization, followed the instructions, and I breathed in a certain way. And I experienced the shift within 10 minutes. And I thought to myself, if this is possible in just 10 minutes, what else is out there? And that is one of the reasons why I, you know, delved deeper into my spiritual journey, but also started a podcast because I thought I could meet people like yourself who have spent many decades trying to understand the human mind, the energy body, and how we can really heal ourselves. And I got to say, I'm really enjoying this journey of having these wonderful conversations and learning a little bit more about myself each and every day. Wonderful. And, you know, I once read about a study that they'd done on MBA students. I can't remember what business school it was. Yeah. But they, after they graduated, they asked them uh, what their next step was. And they had a group of them that said, I just want to make money and I'm just going to look for the job that gives me the most money. Yeah. And then they had another group that said, I'm going to follow my passion. Yeah. I'm not going to worry yeah. about the, the rest of it. I'm just going to do what makes me feel happy. Right. And then we followed them. And years later, the ones who actually were making the most, <laughs> had the most abundance were the ones who followed their passion and not the ones who sacrificed their passion just to make money. So I always thought that that's pretty, pretty interesting. Very, very true. I mean, I've, I come across so many of these guests, including yourself, who at a certain point understood, okay, what do I want? But more importantly, what does the audience want? What do the people want? And how can I be of greatest service? And when people went down that route, it did take a little more time compared to the immediate, you know, making more money, but then people more were more successful, but also more fulfilled. And I must say that you were one of the mentors that I came across early in my journey because you did hire an intern, right? From our MBA program. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Yes, I'd forgotten that. Yeah. And, you know, it's fascinating how mentors come in your life, but I do consider you as one of my mentors because you sort of shaped my thinking and my outlook earlier on when I just came out of my MBA. And we did a little joint venture back in the day. And uh, yeah, I so appreciate you for everything that you've done. No, likewise, likewise. And um, so let's let's delve in a bit more into because it's been a little while since I spoke to you, and and so to me, all of this stuff that you're doing around soma breath work is is a new part of your story that I've ne- not heard about before. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what soma breath work is yeah sure um so basically what it is is um i help people or share these ancient practices of breathing that largely stem from yoga so yogic breathing pranayama Mm -hmm. but what we also do is we're blending it with some music uplifting music, brainwave music, Mm. which helps people access a deeper state of consciousness in a shorter period of time, right? So we're mixing the breath work with some music, with a lot of affirmations and intention setting, visualization. And when you do these experiences, as you might agree, in a group, it sort of creates a healing field that facilitates healing and transformation. So basically, if I can put it in one sentence, it would be blending ancient wisdom along with, you know, modern scientifically engineered music and backed backed up by research. So there's a lot of science, a lot of research that backs up the benefits of breath work. And part of this was also me really journaling and surrendering to the universe and understanding what should I be doing in my life. And if you look at the yogic path, the eighth eightfold path of yoga, I see a lot of people jumping into meditation straight away. But if you look at the path, it's, it's step number six or seven. Mm. 
Mm. So it's a very ad- advanced practice. But yoga tells us before trying to control your mind, which can be hard because you have 72,000 thoughts in a day, why not try controlling your body and your breath? Because once you control your breath, you can influence your physiology and also lead to spontaneous healing. And it's easier to control your breath because all of us breathe and we can take conscious control of our breathing. And in the Latin language, inspirar means to breathe in. And as the name suggests, when you breathe in consciously, you get inspiration, you get ideas, nuggets, you get wisdom, uh, you get synchronicities. Expirar means to breathe out. Expirar also suggests dying. But in the type of breath work that we do, we breathe out, but we hold our breath. And when when you uh, exhale and hold your breath, that's very powerful, at least to healing, cellular repair, also longevity. And there's a lot of science that backs this up. So that is why I felt that breath work would be like a gateway experience for a lot of my listeners who might be new to this journey of Tantra and yoga and working with the chakras. But also what we are finding is when you breathe consciously, you can also influence and heal your chakras. So that's the beauty of it. Yeah. No, it sounds fantastic. And this it's interesting, this blend that you've put together so I, I want to ask you a little bit about that. Yeah. So tell us more about the, the music that you are using. Are you working with them, a particular musician? Um, or where's, what, how did you choose the music? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And so uh, Soma Breath is, um, is a company by a person called Neeraj Nayak and his team, they're musicians. Uh And so as an instructor, what I get access to is a variety of different types of music. And this music is, I believe it's isochronic, but basically what it's doing is it's using a certain beat, a certain tone and a certain uh, type and blend of music that puts a person into a state of hypnosis, but positive hypnosis. So basically the idea is that usually in our day-to-day life, our brain is normally in beta frequency. Mm -hmm. And through the breathing, through the music, you're slowly but surely reducing the frequency, getting it to alpha, where the brain is more receptive to ideas. It's in a hypnagogic state. And so it's more impressionable. And the beauty is in this state, we're talking good things, we're talking affirmations, we're setting intentions, we're allowing people to open their minds to new possibilities, healing, as well as manifestation and attraction of abundance. So if you look at history, the shamans and our ancient elders and people living in tribes, they were all attuned to music. And even if you look at ancient Rome, I believe there was like a temple of music or a temple of dreaming where people would take them, they would sleep. And because of the chambers, the vibration was so powerful that in the morning they were like healed. Uh, So I myself, I'm learning more and more about healing and music. Wonderful. Well, we're going to continue after the break. We do have to take a short break for some messages. Um, Listeners, you're tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And we're talking to our guest, AJ, who is telling us all about Soma breath work. I'll just take a pause and uh, I also need to note down each time we start a segment so I can correctly (laughs) end it at the correct time. Right, yeah. I'm just going to wait one minute and then I'll be starting at 8.50. Okay. Um, I'll take a sip of my coffee. Good idea. So welcome back listeners. You're tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And today I have a fabulous guest. His name is AJ. And he is the founder of a podcast called My Seven Chakras, which is a brilliant podcast but he's also a certified Soma Breathwork instructor. And he's come on the show today to inspire us 
<laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about um, how you inspire and expire through the breath. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's ta- teaching us how we can reduce stress, calm the mind, relax the nervous system by changing the breath. And we were discussing before the break the elements of the combined work that you do, which combines the breath work, music, affirmations and visualizations. And I, I thought it was interesting about the, the music and I, you're absolutely right. I've, uh, you know, not just ancient Rome, but ancient Egypt. Music was a big part of the temples in ancient Egypt and probably goes all the way back to prehistory with, yeah. um, you know, if you believe in Atlantis and Lemuria and all of that. So um, there is a really long tradition, actually, of all of these things that you're talking about, the use of music in going into an altered state of consciousness and breath work as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm fascinated to learn more about the, the breath work that you do. I mean, I know I teach meditation, as you know, and and so we always start with um, setting up um, a regulated breath that is a deep inhale and a deep exhale as a rhythm to underpin the meditation that we're doing. And having learned about all of the different forms of meditation that are out there, most of them have breath work as a foundation yep. for whatever other elements might be involved. So tell us a bit more about the specifics of the breath work that you do, because I know we've got square breathing, we've got the ascending breath, we've got different, we've even got, I think, Taoist practices where they yep. train themselves to, uh, for their inhale and exhale to last yep. a really, really, really long time. Yep. So, so tell us um, more about your style of breath work. Sure. And, uh, you know, I wish I could call it my style, but <laughs> this style. is something that we're drawing from ancient, uh, ancient sure. wisdom. Uh, but yeah, so one of the most interesting things that I've come across is, uh, uh, is something called intermittent hypoxia, brief intermittent hypoxia. And what it is, is in the 1930s or 40s, uh, Russian scientists from the erstwhile Soviet Union they were very fascinated by high performance because it was the Olympic Games and they wanted to compete with the US. So they wanted to get their edge and make their athletes really high performing. And what they noticed was when they went to people living in high altitudes, whether it's Tibet or Himalayas or anywhere around the world, the people who were there, for the most part, were, were very strong in their immunity. They were very, they had high stamina and they lived really long, especially the yogis in ancient India. And they try to see what are they doing? Well, you know, what are the, some of the lifestyle practices that they're indulging in that is allowing them to lead such healthy and long, long lives. Um, and what they realized was maybe it's the oxygen content high up there that's mm-hmm. facilitating this. And they said, well, how can we do this for our own athletes? And so what they ended up doing was taking these athletes in helicopters, high up in the mountains, doing these exercises in that lower oxygen conditions and then bringing them back down. They also also made these pretty expensive uh, 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 machines that had masks so that for a brief amount of time, the oxygen was lowered. And what they noticed was amazing because what they found out when you lower the oxygen in your body for a limited amount of time, for a short period of time, that leads to the proliferation of stem cells, which are normally hidden in your uh, um, Bone marrow? In the bone marrow, sorry. I was just waiting for the right word. <laughs> Hidden the bone marrow. Uh, but they're allowed to roam around the body looking for cells that need healing and repair. Now that's great. And they were like, wait, can this? Can there be a more natural way to do this? And they looked up the yogic text and there it was. So pranayama has this phase where we hold our breath after breathing consciously for a few minutes. And when you hold your breath, essentially what you're doing is you're reducing the level of oxygen in your bloodstream for a brief period of time. And that leads to stem cell proliferation. Um, And that 
is beautiful because not only like I've alluded to, it leads to cellular healing, cellular repair, but if you keep doing it on an ongoing basis, people have found out that it leads to longevity as well. So this is really interesting. And the good thing is, we're not only talking about spirituality, but we're also talking about stuff that is backed by a lot of research and science, which is why a lot of people are fascinated. Yeah. So that's one thing. <laughs> that's great. I mean, I thought you were going to say that the, the uh, red blood cells proliferate. <laughs> they do too. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, so that's very, very interesting. And, um, ha. Huh. So I, I also read something, and I don't know if I can remember it correctly, but that this has an effect on the nervous system as well. Is that yes. right? So can you tell me a little bit more about that and how that works? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this, again, is so fascinating, and I don't know how it works so well. Um, the other day, I was doing a live stream to demonstrate this particular technique for mm -hmm. our Facebook group. And I was doing a live stream, right? So in, in demonstrating, I did this technique. It was evening. It's about, I would say, about 8.39. After finishing the technique, I went back to my computer because I had to get some work done. And I felt sleepy. I felt so sleepy. And my head was, within a few minutes, almost on the table and going to sleep. Because this technique helps people. Um, he uh, so... Let me just say that again. This technique helps people get more sleep and helps people relax. The thing is that I think we've been lied to or maybe the information hasn't been spread properly. We've been told all our lives that our nervous system is an autonomic nervous system and we have no control over it, right? Uh, but the truth is using certain breath, breathing techniques, you can have conscious control over our autonomic nervous system. Now, as your listeners might know, we've got two parts. One is the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic. So when we were as uh, hunter-gatherers out in the jungle, we see a saber-toothed tiger, our sympathetic nervous system would get activated, fight or flight, because you can't rash rationalize out there. You can't ask, wait, is this line a good line or not? Does it have good intentions or bad intentions? <laughs> you got to run away from there, right? So that's when all the energy, all the blood goes to the hands and legs and we run. But when we're safe after a few miles or after 10 to 20 minutes, then our body would naturally go to this parasympathetic uh, 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 system where the energy and resources will be focused on digestion, immune building, and mental processing. But unfortunately, these days, because of our work and the stress, it's chronic. So we're not running from that tiger, but we're running from deadlines. We're running away from our boss's emails or running away from bullying and people judging us. So our system is always in this sympathetic state of being that leads to increased stress and chronic conditions. And so uh, there's this, uh, so what we need to do is using a certain type of breathing technique, activate the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is the longest nerve in the body, connects our brain stem to our tongue, to our throat, to our chest, our lungs, our diaphragm, and even our stomach. So strategically, if somehow we're able to stimulate this vagus nerve, it's going to send a harmonizing signal all across our body, allowing us to really relax. And there's actually a technique when we extend our exhalation, it automatically sends, uh, it stimulates a vagus nerve, which stimulates the entire nervous system. So in for two, out for four. Or in for four, in through the nose, and out through the mouth for eight counts. So we extend the exhalation, stimulates the vagus nerve. Now to amplify that, somebody can also hum. So hum is really powerful. So so to answer your question, this extended exhalation type of breathing is one of the most effective in the evening, helps you relax, digest, and most importantly, get healing, relaxing, good quality sleep. That's brilliant. And that, <laughs> it's funny because that brings me exactly to my personal question, oddly enough. Yeah, yeah. So I have been um, doing some work lately on my own brain. Yeah. Clearing out energy within the brain. Um, and I did some work to clear out my hippocampus. Mm -hmm. 
after I did that, yeah. I noticed this feeling and in around my solar plexus region. Mm. And what it is, it's the vagus nerve. Yeah. I can feel all of the, almost like all of the pathways of the vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. And it's like little butterflies, <laughs> little yeah. butterflies. And, and I'm like, okay, so what have I done here? I've done something here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I would like to find a way to help either calm the vagus nerve or or bring that back into balance because I think I, what I did, and I've also been having chiropractic in the neck. Yeah. I think that either the work on the brain, it's or the chiropractic has right. had a stimulating effect on the on the vagus nerve. Yep. And I've been working at it in my own way, and it's still yeah. butterflying. Okay. So AJ, with your expertise. Yeah. Um, uh, working with the breath work and helping calm down the vagus nerve, what would you prescribe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, that's interesting how we come across these techniques and practices that allow us to really activate our body. And when we unlock the full potential of our body, it's fascinating because we've we're not used to such a tangible whole body experience, right? Mm -hmm. I myself do a lot of cold showers in the morning. And when I come out of the cold shower, I feel refreshed. I feel relaxed and energized. I'm also doing one meal a day these days. So I'm having just one meal in the evening. And I feel the fasting really is helping me. At least it's a personal challenge. Um, and so to your point, you're saying that you did an exercise or you did some practice that has stimulated your vagus nerve. And or the vagus nerve is adjusting to the changes I made in my brain. I think oh, okay. that's the way of saying it. Yeah, okay. So it's adjusting. I mean, I think for the most part, as you might agree, our body is a natural healer. And so that will definitely subside. The stimulation of the vagus nerve is actually good because it activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest, digest, and heal phase of the nervous system. But if you want to ensure that there is complete harmony, complete synchronization and balance all across your body in terms of breathing, mm -hmm. then you can activate your heart coherence. And so what the heart and the body does not like is incoherent breathing for an ongoing period. So ups and downs, lefts and rights, the body craves symmetry. And so one of the ways to you know, lead to more synchronous synchronization of the body is the you could do the four by four breathing. Mm -hmm. When you inhale through the nose for four, exhale out of the mouth for four. Inhale for four, exhale for four. Or you could do inhale for eight, exhale for eight. So once you do this for at least three to four minutes, your body reaches a state that's called heart coherence. And again, this, uh, your heart sends a signal, a relaxing, calming signal all through your body. And most importantly, you're able to enter into a state of flow much more easily. So if you're writing a book or if you're working on a blog post or you want your body and mind to reach a state of flow, heart coherence breathing is really, really powerful. Yes, and I'm doing it as you're explaining it to me. And what's interesting is as I'm doing it, I can feel myself, especially on the exhale, breathing down into the chest cavity and down into that area where the vagus nerve has been stimulated. Yeah. So I can feel, so I'm going to try that after this. <laughs> Absolutely. It works within you know, minutes. It's so good. It's so effective. And also I wanted to mention for your listeners, um, in terms of breathing correctly, and I wasn't taught this in school, but always breathe in through your nose out through your mouth when you're doing breath work but throughout the day in and out through the nose mouth breathing is one of the biggest challenges that leads to a lot of uh, chronic disorders immune conditions and ultimately these even worse things like cancer so breathe in and out through the nose yeah and it feels like that sets up an energy circuit a specific energy circuit 
that's what that's related to. Is that right? Absolutely. And, and if we have a few more minutes, I could talk about the significance behind breathing through the nose and out through the nose. Yeah, let's do that. We've got a few more minutes before the next break. So probably long enough to do that. Okay, perfect. So the thing is that uh, I have a lot of conversations and I ask people, how do you breathe? And a lot of people say it's in and out through the mouth and they're surprised with aren't that, isn't that the way we're supposed to breathe? But the thing is that our evolution is powerful. We have evolved to breathe in through the nose because the thing is we feel that we need a lot of oxygen, but if you look and analyze our blood, the diluted oxygen, SpO2 in our blood is normally 98 to 99. We have a lot of oxygen. What we do need is more carbon dioxide. We need to balance the oxygen and carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide has received a negative rep. Uh, so we need oxygen, but we need just enough oxygen. When we breathe in through the mouth, we get too much of oxygen. And just like when you place an iron out in the air, it leads to rust. In the same way, too much of oxygen can lead to oxidative damage and our organs being attacked by free radicals which is not a good condition to be in. And so when you breathe in through the nose, firstly, you're getting just the amount, enough amount of oxygen. Secondly, because there are filters in our nose, the air is getting filtered. It's getting warm because it's going through the nose compared to the mouth. And fourth, because in our sinuses, when the air passes through our sinuses, uh, it creates nitric oxide. And nitric oxide facilitates the movement of oxygen down our lungs, out of the alveoli, and into the blood. So it sort of has the effect of dilating these aspects of our lung. And when the oxygen goes into our blood more effectively, that reaches the mitochondria and leads to the creation of energy. In other words, if you breathe in through the nose, you're getting more energy and you're using less resources for the production of energy, which is always a good thing. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We will take another break. Um, when we come uh, back from the break, we'll talk more about breath work. Listeners, you're tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and my guest, AJ. And we're talking about Soma breath work. We'll be back after these messages. Cool. <laughs> cool. Okay, so... Twenty minutes from nine oh eight is nine twenty eight, so I need to finish like nine twenty five next. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Welcome back, listeners. You're tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and my guest today, AJ. He is the he has a podcast called My Seven Chakras, which is a fantastic podcast, and he's also a certified Soma Breathwork instructor. And today we're talking about how regulating your breath and doing soma breath work, which involves both specialized breathing techniques and music and affirmations and visualizations, how you can reduce stress in your life. And before the break, AJ, you were explaining why it's so important to breathe in through the nose. Now, why is it important to breathe out through the mouth? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the reason why you use the mouth is because you're able to more effectively control the air going out of the mouth. So when you breathe out through the mouth, what I do recommend is imagining that you're bring, breathing out through a straw or that you're fogging the mirror. So when you add this resistance to the out breath, it uh, ensures that there is a slow let out of carbon dioxide. You're not letting it out all of a sudden. Uh, and that stimulates what is called the Bohr's effect. Now, I could explain that. But basically what it is, is when you're breathing in oxygen, the oxygen is getting, it binds to the hemoglobin in your blood. And uh, for the energy production to take place, the, the oxygen has to get relieved or ejected from the hemoglobin to reach the mitochondria where the energy is created. And so that's where when you breathe out 
and imagining that you're breathing out through a straw, the level of carbon dioxide slowly builds up in your blood. And when that happens, after a certain point, it stimulates what is called the Bohr's effect, where the oxygen is ejected from your hemoglobin, enters the mitochondria, and leads to energy production. In other words, the point of breathing is not just for intaking oxygen, but the oxygen has to reach the mitochondria. And breathing out in this way allows for the oxygen to effectively go into the energy house of our body where the energy is produced, which is the mitochondria. I hope that's clear. It is, it is, and it makes absolute sense. Yeah. So let's take some of this now and apply it to our modern world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you already started to do that by explaining how much stress we're under. But particularly today, mm. we're in the midst of a global pandemic, yeah. Um, not only a global pandemic, but people have concerns on a financial level. They have concerns about their businesses. They're not able to live their lives in the same way that they've been used to doing. So how can what you teach help people with what they're currently going through? Right. Yeah, it's a very interesting phase that a lot of us are going through. And, you know, some people are losing their jobs or their businesses having a lot of issues, relationship issues. People are going through divorces or breakups mm -hmm. and even spiritual issues where people are really questioning what is their purpose here on earth. I do see that there is a, a ray of light or a silver lining in this situation because a lot of people, because they are at home, they're forced to take online courses. They're forced to think about their purpose. They're forced to think about what is it that I truly want to do in life? And that can only be a good thing. And I think the universe is facilitating this. From a philo philosophical standpoint, what breathwork teaches us is that sometimes we're always doing, right? We're always doing and doing and doing. We have these schedules and we're going to work and coming back and not even having these meaningful, mindful conversations with our spouse or with our children. And breathwork teaches us that you can always press pause by holding your breath. And so it's just an opportunity for our listeners to take a pause and realize where in their life they are. Are they really enjoying what they're doing? When was the last time they truly felt happy and blissful and joyful? And I think the questions that we ask lead to a better, better quality of our life because it allows us to stop and think and ponder about the more important things in life, like we were discussing before this interview, which is joy and fulfillment and bliss. Um, so that's one thing. But the other thing is also the, the knowledge that they always have this tool with them, especially if they're in, at work and they have like a brainstorming session that did not go well, or somebody's, you know, talking badly or negatively towards them, or maybe they did not get that promotion that they really were expecting over the last couple of years. And so the extended exhale is always going to help you, especially if you want to calm down, you want to relax. And if I were to put an HRV monitor on my heart or your heart, it's you can actually see your uh, stress getting switched off in your parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and relax system getting activated. So once again, breathe in through your nose. So breathe in for four counts. In, two, three, four. Out for eight. Out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. In for four. Three, four. Out to the mouth. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can always hum into the nose for four. In, two, three, four. Out, and I don't know how this works, but it does work. You'll notice within two to three minutes, you will really relax, you'll feel calm, and you'll feel de-stressed. And what we are noticing is the quality of our lives is also what we focus on. Wayne Dyer said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at begin to change. So you'll be in that same office, you'll be amongst the same colleagues, but because your, sh your state has shifted, you'll respond to life's challenges or opportunities in a much 
different, more empowering way. Yeah, no, that's, that's brilliant. And especially brilliant for the situation that you were describing, because I think people in the work situation might not necessarily want to be sitting in their office meditating. Yeah. <laughs> if someone walks in on them and says, hey, what are you doing? But right. um, you, you can be doing breath work and nobody necessarily even knows that you're doing it. I wanted to add one more thing also, which is shaking. So whenever you get an opportunity, morning, afternoon, or evening, you can go in a room where nobody is going to disturb you. Spend two minutes shaking your entire body. Uh, we see animals out in nature, dogs, cows, cats, shake whenever they're nervous. That helps to release the stress, release the trauma that may be stuck in your body. So I do this a lot. Put on the music and shake, 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 shake your entire body like nobody's watching. And you will feel de-stressed, more calm, energized after a few minutes. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and fun. <laughs> yeah. So is there some additional advice or guidance that you'd like to give to our listeners to help them? Um, one advice for sure is that we as humans tend to be social creatures. And especially because the current pandemic has forced us to be unsocial. In other words, stay at home, social distance, right? Stay away from crowds. It's always important to realize that no matter what situation, challenge you're going through, whether it's anxiety or depression, that there's always somebody out there who is willing to listen to you. Whether it's your family member or your friend, a lot of people feel guilty or feel that it's my own problem. Why should I you know, speak to somebody else. But the truth is, once you speak to that one person, or you just surround yourself with a tribe, where even if it's online, even if it's on Zoom, your body responds, you know, naturally, your body starts relaxing. And so if it's not breath work, if it's not meditation, at least get started by surrounding yourself by people who will hold space for you without any judgment, no matter where you are, or no matter what situation or challenge you're going through. So find your tribe or just find that one person who is willing to listen to you. And that sounds like a, a brilliant piece of advice. And, yeah. and I guess because you know, the other thing that I see a lot of at the moment is there's a lot of conspiracy theory stuff out there. And a lot yeah. of people are getting into this whirlwind of yeah. stress by watching all the conspiracy theories. Right. And so when they get together, yeah. they are amplifying that. Mm. <laughs> right? yeah. So you want to choose your tribe carefully yeah. so that um, it's a tribe that's focusing on moving in a positive direction. Um, yeah. Very quickly, do you know the meaning of conspire? Well, isn't that interesting? Because now you say it, <laughs> I, I hear that there's spire. So inspire, expire, conspire. So tell us, AJ. <laughs> well, back in the day, like hundreds of years back, people knew the importance of breathing, spire, spirar. Con means together. Conspire means breathing together. Isn't people that fabulous? Yeah. So get together with your tribe and conspire. Conspire. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we need I to conspire. <laughs> wow. It's interesting how we change over time. Yeah. The, the meaning of words, because that said that way, that's very positive to conspire. But I can yeah. see how that then got shifted because now we're together and we're on the same wavelength and we're matching our ideas and we're matching our energy <laughs> and yeah. now we've got some nefarious intent <laughs> well the uh, conspiracy theorist was a term introduced by the cia somewhere in 1970 because they did not like people coming together and awakening and asking questions and seeking out the truth so i do agree that there's a lot of Mm -hmm. you know, uh, questionable news. But I think what is good is people are asking questions and seeking out and not limiting themselves to the status quo 
and what news is being spread through the mainstream Absolutely. startup media <laughs> you know and and now there's plenty of amazing actually good news sources cropping up and yeah. podcasts that you can listen to that yes. will inspire you such as my second chakras so talk and you're going to be on the show soon so oh yeah i am I'm <laughs> super looking, excited i'm looking forward to that so aj tell us uh, tell us a little bit about my seven chakras and even give people the address they can go to to find it sure. uh, so what's going on lately in in the podcast um, yeah, so My 7 Chakras is a podcast where we have inspiring and uplifting conversations with yogis and healers and shamans and mystics and people who help people relax and wind and connect with the universe. And so I enjoy having these conversations and people seem to enjoy listening on to these conversations as well. And so, uh, you know, doing the same thing, but doing a lot of live stream videos, that's what I start with. And then I post these sessions on our different podcasting uh, platforms like iTunes and Google and Spotify and Stitcher. Um, if somebody wants to listen, they just go to their favorite podcast app and just search for my seven is a word, my seven chakras, C-H-A-K-R-A-S, my seven chakras, and they'll come across the podcast. It's free to listen to, like all podcasts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's one thing about the podcast. The other thing, is if people want to learn more, right? Is that what you said? Well, yeah, no, I, I was going to ask you to give us some more information about what you've been doing uh, with the breath work, sharing it with sure. people and what you're planning to do. Sure. What, what's happening in that realm? Yeah, so one thing I realized uh, in my journey is that people love live experiences. People love getting together in a community because sometimes when you do a course and it's all by yourself, you don't feel that motivated to really complete. It's hard to do it. It's hard to feel accountable. And so what I do is I do these Sunday morning breathwork sessions on Zoom where people all over the world can come together and we conspire. We breathe in and out together with music, with affirmations, with intentions. And people seem to be really enjoying it. And people are able to see shifts in their own lives and in their own health conditions. Uh, so we do that on a Sunday morning. Sometimes I do intro workshops as well on Zoom for people who are new to breathwork and want to get a glimpse into this healing modality. Uh, and I'm also starting to do more events at you know, in-person workshops, uh, events for corporates, as well as if given an opportunity, maybe for a school, maybe for an orphanage. For an orphanage. So I want to spread this medicine, this ancient uh, practice, wherever I can. So that's the idea. And I'm going on, on a lot of shows like yours mm -hmm. as a guest as well to share my own story because I'm usually on the other side of the table. Now I'm switching sides, so to speak. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds fantastic. And one thing I realized I didn't really ask you about is the visualization and affirmation side of it. So when you're getting people into this um, relaxed state, yeah and they're listening to the music, what kinds of things are you introducing as affirmations and visualizations? Yeah, so the interesting thing about affirmations is when I tell somebody in their brain state that, they, that they're in right now, which is the beta state, where it's all logical, it's all rational, it's all do, do, do. I tell them, you're kind, you're beautiful, you're wealthy, you're loving, you're grateful. They'll be like, no, that doesn't make sense. That's not me. No, no, no. That's not the identity that I'm familiar with. But when they go down in their brain wave, they go into alpha, they go into theta, where they're in a more impressionable state of being. Then when I say you are beautiful, they experience an energetic shift. You are powerful. You are magnanimous. You are, you know, handsome or whatever. They're more receptive and that slowly but surely becomes part of their identity because we're doing the same affirmations, but we're, we're doing it when their, their brain is in a more absorption, impressionable state. And so that's the, that's the affirmations. But for the visualization, I usually take people on a journey. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, just imagine that you are in your favorite place in the entire world. You are with somebody that you love. 
you're doing something that you really enjoy and you are excited, you are grateful, you are surging with energy. And so I'm taking them on these ecstatic journeys and they can't help but feel this, you know, magic. And when they come out of the meditation, they're like, oh, yeah, gee, I saw colors, I saw this, I saw that. You know, I was feeling this warmth up and down my spine and I was, some people say, I, I sense angels, you know, just like it is with any healing journey, uh, they're able to experience something different. So that's the purpose of the affirmations and the intentions. Oh, that sounds fantastic. So if somebody wants to join you on your Sunday morning journey or take one of your introductory workshops, how do they go about that? <laughs> Thanks a lot. So the way to do this is we've got a Facebook group where we have over 3,000 kindred souls and I think you're part of our Facebook group as well. Uh, but the first step is just to join our Facebook group because from time to time, I add some uplifting posts. We have discussions. And I also announce our weekly yogic breathwork events. Uh, so the way to join our Facebook group is go to my 7 forward slash T-R-I-B-E, tribe. My 7 is a word, my 7 forward slash T-R-I-B-E. Be. The reason why I say tribe is when I was growing up, I always had this fear of abandonment, of not being welcome in a tribe, of not getting to be a part of the tribe. And so I've made this intention in my own journey to welcome people of all genders, communities, nationalities, body shapes in our tribe without any judgment so that we can come together and we can lead to the healing of the world in our own very small way. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. And groups like that provide such a great service. I know myself, and it's happening a bit less, but the ones who are waking up often are the ones who feel like the black sheep. Like I don't so belong true. anywhere. And yeah. so it's so wonderful now with all the technology that we have that all of those individual black sheep <laughs> can meet and get together and feel it's like they true. belong and that they found um, a group of people that they resonate with. Well, thank you so much, AJ, for being on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure and I can't wait to put into practice what you have shared with us. And uh, listeners, you've been listening to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie and with AJ, who is the host of My Seven Chakras, and I'm going to get you to say your Facebook group again because I can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Go to this Facebook group. So it's my seven chakras.com forward slash T R I B E, tribe. My seven chakras.com forward slash tribe. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, listeners, and we will be back next Tuesday at seven o'clock Pacific time. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome.